I fought a DDoS and lived to tell the tale. Well, this this sounds... I mean, this this does sound exciting. Prologue, calm before the storm. Middle of June, 2023, Wednesday. It was a beautiful sunny day, and I was just about ready to call it a day when we were supposed to go to my girlfriend's parents for dinner and have a nice long walk with our golden retriever puppy, Crypto. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Man, this is this is already this is already shaping up to be a story just based on the dog's name. Okay, you, you just can't come in naming your dog's crypto. Oh my goodness, he was ready and roared to go, just like crypto. Uh, and so were we. Uh, I have no idea what was about to hit me. We had just released a project a few weeks before that, so I grabbed my backpack and my laptop, you know, just in case. Always, dude. When whenever, when I used to work at Netflix, by the way, I always carried my my back my backpack around. You never know. You just never know. All is good. We get there. I sit down, and no more than five to ten minutes later, my phone starts vibrating like crazy. My first thought was, yep, that hot fix incoming. What a great way to start dinner. <laughs> yep, everyone's texting me to let me know how good this hot fix was. Man, I'm, I'm just such an ace. I'm an ace in the pocket, boys. I took a look at my phone and noticed my work slack was all over the place. Did we release anything? Did we change uh, something weird today? Any idea why we're this slow? I can only see the spinner. Oh, no. Oh, no. My first thought was, yeah, we probably messed something up. No rush. We'll roll back. About the same time, I get a message from our CTO and head of engineering. So it looks like we're really slow to the point we can't use the app. Would you mind jumping on a call? Part one. It gets worse. By the way, this is such... This is such a beautiful start. Imagine, I, I wish, we don't know to what, where they're at in their relationship. I really wish it would have been like their first date, right? How great would the first date ever be with the uh, with the uh, girlfriend's parents that you just show up and five minutes into dinner, you're just like, I got to go right now. The, the world is burning by. <laughs> so good. I rush to my laptop, open the AWS console and start digging into things. Me. So did we have a release today? Nope. That's not it. Hmm, me. Let's check the database. Some traffic. If uh, less than what we have at peak hours. Hmm, that's strange. Is that A, our head of engineering? Uh, I noticed a load balancer alert being triggered around half an hour ago, but nothing new since that. Me. Oh, that's because it's still on. Holy moly, look at that traffic. T, our CTO. So is it bad? People are spamming uh, me about how uh, us being slow. Me. It looks like we have 10x the traffic we usually do at peak time. Me, oh, that's odd. Why did the API gateway scale out? It shouldn't unless, how much traffic do we have? A, oh Lord. CTO, is this a DDoS? Isn't this like, isn't this why everybody uses Cloudflare? I thought you used Cloudflare for two reasons. One, to help prevent a DDoS. And two, to get bullied into an enterprise plan and pay one year up front. I thought that was like the whole point of using Cloudflare. Was to get, to, to, to get extortioned. And to also have DDoS protection. DDoS protection, but lack of protection against enterprise plans. Part two, before it gets better. And to share passwords with the NSA. Never forget the NSA password sharing. There's a theory. I've heard this floated around by some people. I'm not going to say who, okay? But I heard that this is just a wild theory, okay? Are you ready for this one? Cloudflare is a lot, is perfectly fine just losing money because they're just an NSA front. Nothing else. They, 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 they purely exist to steal everyone's information. And they're perfectly fine losing money forever because they just keep having money. A wild theory appeared. What do you want to do? I don't know what to do with it. I just heard it. And it's kind of funny. Finally, the government provided some services with their tax money. You know what? You know, to be completely fair, it's probably the best thing the government's done in a long time. Okay? You know, if we're gonna, if we're going to be real about it, Let's see, a few months ago, we had just started a due diligence process for a security certification for the company. We did our best to get the most uh, of that feedback in. Luckily, one of the first things we prioritized was the web application firewall, WAF. Not to be confused with wet-ass programming, WAP. I remember we debated long and hard if, this, if it's really worth it. Does it justify the cost for our business? Do we really know what we want to filter out with it? Uh, what, let's see, we were about to find out for sure. Meme. Okay, so I checked the dashboards. It bad. How bad? DDoS bad. We have the WAF configured. Let me switch that on. 
So I turn it on and nothing happens. Well, not exactly nothing. We probably filter out like 10% of the traffic and it's still heavy duty. I ping the other half of the Sri team and my colleague O joins the call. We got the Avengers assembled now. Me, hey O, TLDR, there's a DDoS going on. App is slow as hell. And I turned on the WAF filtered out like 10% of the traffic, but it's hitting us like crazy. Oh, do we have load balancers access logs? We sure do. Let's grab those while you guys try to figure out what's going on. Okay, this is good. This is a good approach. I like what's happening here. Before anyone managed to do uh, much with the logs, we started getting in sampling requests from the WAF. I quickly looked at those and saw that most IPs are originating from North Korea, Russia, and China. Shocking. What is this? Is this, is, is this like an M, non, M. Night Shyamalan reveal? Just like, oh my gosh, it's the craziest turn of events. M. Night Shyamalan came on here and told us, oh shit, it's from North Korea, Russia, and China. Uh, you know, all the fun stuff. None of the places where we serve the app. I quickly set up GeoRule to, uh, to enable it, and boom, DDoS was over. Very nice. Great success. Very nice. Everyone was happy. We started doing our postmortem to the customers, and internally, pretty much everyone needed uh, that needed to hear about how good we were. We had two things, uh, two more things needed to do. All right, let's hear about this. Export all the logs and make them queryable via AWS Athena. Uh, add alerts based on WAF rules to measure allowed and blocked traffic. That's it. We can go back to business. Nothing can break us. Part three: There be dragons. <laughs> It's so funny when it's stereotypically China, Russia, North Korea. I mean, it's just too funny. It's too funny because it's like, it's it's just literally what, like, if somebody would be like, hey, I'm getting DDoSed, I'd be like, ah, is it from China? Yes, it is. Wow. Got it. The, tr the holy trinity of, D of DDoS. Yeah, it literally is. Uh, next few days, uh, together, my colleagues, oh, we chatted about it, mocked <clears throat> it even at times. It wasn't that bad. We were even making fun of uh, fun that all the big guys had been DDoSed in the past few days, and uh, some were down for hours. For us, it was barely 15 to 30 minutes of slowness, and that's it. Some Microsoft things. Funny how uh, life has a way of striking back when you are cocky. I looked at the metrics and was in awe. We had s like 60 million requests in 10 to 15 minutes. It might not seem much, but trust me, for a startup it is. We stopped it just in time. Great job, everyone. Friday, 9.30 a.m., peak morning traffic. Alarms went crazy like everything we set up last night and early in the morning was literally screaming. Nice. So, you know, it is, it is very funny. Whenever you think you've done something really amazing, life does just have a way. Life would be a comedy if it wasn't a tragedy. Uh, a minute later, the CTO calls. So, not sure how to say this, but we're down. But we have the WAF. Yeah, we're still down. I felt that slap on my face as I opened up the WAF, da WAF dashboard. I have never seen something like that in my life. If 16 million requests in 15 minutes was a lot, well, imagine the shock when it was uh, that in three minutes. More exactly, we had over 300 million requests hitting our servers in less than 15 minutes. That, okay, that's a lot of traffic. I mean, that's just a lot of traffic for anybody. That's just a, that's just a lot of traffic for, for everybody. That's crazy. Me. Okay. They're probably just using different geolocations on it. Let's grab the logs so we can block them. Sure thing. Let's uh, block all non-US traffic and be done with it. We can reassess after that. Five minutes later. Yeah, well, they just redirected all ta traffic. We're still being hit. I started looking at those requests and stripping every part of them. URL? Nope. Nothing fishy. Auth headers? Nope. Nothing weird. User agent? Yeah, some seem fishy. We block all those. Still there. Then it strikes me. Connection. Keep alive. Every request in our samples had this header on. Well, yeah, but every doesn't every single request from your browser effectively have Keep Alive on? Does, isn't Keep Alive one of those uh, tricks that the browser uses to be able to make the concurrent request so it doesn't have to keep on doing stuff? I'm pretty sure if you just make a, a connection request for some from, from some items, it has some Keep Alive going. Not always. It works on partial requests. Well, yes, but not by default as far as I know. I'm pretty sure Chrome does a lot of, a lot of that. Like if you make... If you make some requests to your server and you have a bunch of stuff, it keeps alive a connection to remake a new HTTP call. It's also how WebSockets work. Every X request in our samples had this header on. I quickly checked our uh, front end. Nope, we were, we were not setting it. Neither does CloudFront. Now, this is weird. I found some article from HackMag, and it was right there in my face. Slow Loris, uh, Loris attack attempts to overwhelm a target server by opening and maintaining many simultaneous HTTP connections to the target. 
Dude trying to stay alive right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, doesn't the great firewall filter DDoS, couldn't they have blocked the outbound? Maybe. Now he's telling us the attacker uh, uh, how to beat the uh, beat their blocking. I know. This is funny. Okay. Again, post-mortem. Apologize to the customers. A debrief internally. All the fun stuff to reassure everybody. Uh, everyone, we're top of our game. Friday was uh, has ended. Not a not great, not terrible. Ten minutes of downtime, but we're still alive. Part four, mayday, mayday, mayday. We are sinking. <laughs> oh my goodness, it keeps going. Monday morning, we get right back at it. We look at our logs to see if we can get any extra rules in there. Nothing pops up, at, uh, at least not in the samples we've looked at. We had more than 300 million data points to check, and this time I had a feeling they'd be back. 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, almost one hour before the expected D-Day time, and my heart was racing. It was Monday evening for me, but I knew I needed to keep my laptop around, and then, just like a Swiss clock, exactly 9.30, it began. Oh, shit, they're back. Not again. Me, we got this. We beat them twice. We can beat them again. Five minutes later, we're down. Not slow, not sluggish, dead time, or dead down. Me and my big mouth. Nice. This thing is a good trinity. This thing is like Lord of the Rings level trinity here. Uh, but this time, oh, uh, it was weird. We had the alerts that we were blocking a ton, but a ton more were still hitting the mark. To my surprise, all of the requests uh, were now originating in the U.S., all 300 million of them in the in initial five-minute batch, and all continuous flow for the next half an hour or so. It was worse than the previous day, and the logs were spamming like crazy. Nice. Look at that. We got some my squeal issues going on here. Too many connections. Does this mean the DB is down? Oh, it sure did. And down it was, overflown with requests. Somehow they were getting through and hitting hard. Me, checking the logs. It looks like we have a ton of API requests to this endpoint. Did we get hacked? I don't know. Let me check the IPs again, see if any got through. So nothing got through but all the IPs from the U.S., but, uh, but some are weird. I remember reading about those. Are they botnet class IPs? I think it's the Onion Network. What's the so I I'm I'm stupid when it comes to hacking in DDoS. What's the what's the Onion Network Tor Tor endpoints? Okay, so it's in fact so just to be clear, NSA front network is what you're trying to say. Tor, classically known as NSA. That's its that's its other name. Just in case you're wondering, that's literally its other name. Uh, did we just, let's see, we did just that. We blocked all the known IPs originating from, uh, in the dark web. Is Tor the dark web, just to be clear? Kinda, no, yes, NSA and Associates, yeah, kind of, part of it, dark web, hell no. It's the carrier network of the, for the dark web, okay. Dark web for normies? I, uh, can I be real here for a second? I don't know what the dark web is, and I don't know how to access it. I've never tried to get into the dark web. I don't know what the deep web is or the dark web. Normie detected? I, You know what? I'm a normie, and I'm fine being one, okay? You aren't missing much, but a lot of trauma. Okay, so I don't... <laughs> it's one of those things you don't need to do that. Just access it on stream as an educational learning stream. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure I'll be hit with, with something... Inappropriate. Nah, but it's really fucked up. Yeah, that's what I figured. All it is is just really messed up stuff constantly. I'm like, oh, okay. I could probably I could probably skip this one. All right. We blocked anonymous cloud provider IPs, bad reputation IPs, and heck, we even blocked a few random ones we grabbed with Athena. We started blocking like 60 to 70% of the traffic, but the remaining traffic was still enough to keep us down. At this time, we decided to block all non-authenticated traffic for the time being, and that was it. A few minutes later, around 90% of our customers were able to access the app, but several were also getting blocked unjustly. That night, I did a hotfix and patched both our front end and our back end. It was not acceptable to have requests passing our API gateway, even hitting our back end and flooding our DB. Released the fix and removed the rules. Uh, bingo. DDoS over. <clears throat> Part five, it ain't over till it's over. Gosh, it's still going. Me, okay. We must be hurting them like crazy. We've blocked so many requests, they're surely about to stop, right? 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 Well, not exactly. If those bot farms, are, uh, let's see, probably cost them like 5 to $10 per million requests. Wow. Of course, they didn't stop. They went on and on for almost an entire two weeks. Each morning, same time. But this time, we were always blocking like 99.9% .9 of the requests. Finally, the day came when they stopped. And just as suddenly as it began, all things went back to normal. Dang. Dang. 
I wonder who does these. I wonder what's the purpose. I mean, we, I don't know. We obviously don't know what kind of business this person's in, but I wonder what the purpose of this is. How, how do we find these articles? Oh, these articles are always on uh, the Reddit, right? The Primogen React. Articles for me to read. Spite, competition most likely. Do you think that competition actually does that? If competition were to be found out to be doing that, and it's like United States competition, couldn't you sue the crap out of them? I would assume. I would assume you could like, you could like, really just destroy them. Yes, and yes, state actors. Yeah, I, I guess we don't know what this person does. Maybe they're just like, oh yeah, this happened to our site, and we also sell military stuff, right? If you found out, yeah, the problem is you have to find out. I won't lie. But the thing is, is that people are notoriously bad at keeping secrets. You know what I mean? Like somebody, somebody finds out and somebody sends a screenshot somewhere. Like that's, uh, that's what happens every single time. Let's uh, say I won't lie. These were probably the most exhausting two weeks or so in many years. I too, I turned out, let's see, it turned out being a happy ending for us, but often it's not the case with DDoS. Here's a bunch of DDoS stuff. Uh, so many stories of companies, both big and small, that suffer terribly because of this. To put it straight, there's nothing you can do to prevent a DDoS. It doesn't matter if you're big or small. Uh, if you have a SaaS or a simple blog, it is, it is just only a matter of time until it could happen to you. For what it does, you need to get some things straight, and here's what you could do. Make sure you use cloud provider that has application uh, web application firewall. Learn how to set it up and how to use it. Even if you need to add it on the fly during an attack, having the muscle memory for it will be golden. A reverse proxy can still do the trick uh, if a WAF is missing, though. Let's see, though, it will be a lot more hard work on your part. If you're using a managed app service such as Vercel and the likes of it, make sure they offer DDoS protection and have a spend limit. If they don't, run. There's plenty, of, let's see, there's plenty that have it. Find the right one. Does Vercel have a spend limit yet? Have you ever been called in the middle of the night for hotfix? Yeah. Uh, since recently. I, I remember reading that they have some sort of uh, Vercel bill thing, right? Uh, if you're on AWS and you can afford the commitment, one year plus 3K uh, a month plus 40K a year, go for AWS Shield. If you can't afford that, uh, that WAF does pretty much the same thing, but you won't get reimbursed for the traffic costs associated with a DDoS that, uh, that they failed to block. If you can afford it, use API Gateway. It, hel see, it helps you shield your services better than you can imagine. Several orders of magnitude cheaper than a WAF and still relatively effective. Do enable load balancer access logs. Yes, it's going to be some extra cost to you, uh, you need to commit to, but how can you study patterns if you don't know uh, the requests? Learn how to best use tooling to scrape and aggregate information from access logs in, a let's see, in AWS Athena is your friend. It's anything but cheap, uh, though really fast. Practice, practice, practice. You need to know your tooling if you're going to be at the top of your game. Sometimes it's cheaper to shut everything down. Choose your battles well. But if you do, beware. You might not be able to get back online for some time. If you have a small blog or personal site, it's not worth fighting for. Do not expect to find any WAF rules out there free for taking. People will not share their secret sauce. Oh, interesting. I, I guess, like, if, if why would someone share their... The, that I, I, I understand. I understand. Let's see, uh, the last piece of advice I can give you is good luck. Uh, and a lot of it, that is, you're going to need it if you're DDoSed, and you're going to need it uh, not to, to be. That's a great article. What a great article. That just sounds awful. I've never had to deal with this. I've never had to deal with, like, a DDoS in that kind of level. But that just sounds rough. As someone building a business, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, I would be freaked out. French Charlotte, though, thank you very much. I already have enough on my plate, and now I have to learn all these tools and just become most excellent with them in the just-in-case situation. I, I, how often do people get DDoS? Well, there's all, there, there are entire networks. Someone is managing hardware and setting up a service for people to DDoS other people. So it, it has to be popular enough to be able to have, like, a market. Use Rust. It's safe. It is. It's safe. You actually can't. You can't get DDoS if you use if you use Rust. It's safe. Who is just in case? I'm not even sure who just in case is. Well, anyways, this was pretty neat. This was really good. Hey, the name. I like that. I like I like that. A gen.